Hi, today we're gonna to share some tricks in Clip Studio Paint that will make flatting easier for beginners and speedier for those who have been doing it a while, and we're gonna get started now. <laughs> Welcome to the Lead into Hardcast mini workshop episode. Uh, this is where we explore an art or creative task and demonstrate how we think about it and work on it. My name is Jersey Drozd. I'm a cartoonist and teaching artist. And the gentleman who is playing that hot lick as we were getting started <laughs> is named. Uh, hey, I'm Rob Stenzinger. I am a user experience designer and I make interactive uh, games and stuff, and I like to teach those things as well as a teaching artist. And he plays How's it going? Music. It's going well. Thank you for the the awesome intro. It got me really like amped up and jazzed to do what we're gonna do today. <sighs> Happy to do it. We that was a, a what who, what leaner suggested that I'm forgetting, but I uh, want to say it was Nate Marcel, but I, I could be wrong. Okay, but yeah, yeah that that sounds uh, that sounds about right. But uh, no, happy to do it. So fun excuse to get out the guitar. So. Um, but yeah, mini workshop episode and Clip Studio paint tips. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I know so, that, yeah, this is, so, uh, go ahead. Well, I just, I, I wonder, like, to, to start with, like, why are we doing this? Like, why is this important? Well, you know, um, flatting in comics is one of the fundamental parts of the process. And it's often also an entry level job for people who want to get started in comics. Or if you're somebody who maybe just wants to be part of publishing, but maybe you aren't an artist or a writer, you could still participate in the process of making a comic. So we're going to do a little demonstration of that, like how to do it, how to make it, how to make it more efficient and speedier. Um, and we're going to give you an example to try yourself. So this is something where it's not just watch me do it and be impressed with how great I am. You get to get to play along too. Right. Yeah, I love that. And I mean, you even have some sample files to share so people can pl like really play along with your with your demo and you, they can play along while you're doing this. If you know you get this, you see this episode in the show notes, go ahead, click links or they can play along after either yeah. way. Either way. Yeah. And so and then we'll, we'll close out with a little bit of wondering about flatting. But first, let's head over to the board. Um, so. Who needs this and why? Mm. Um, so, like I said, like you might want to get started in like being involved in comics in some way. Like, like I know people who don't identify as artists, but like they love comics and comic books, and they want to be involved. Like, it basically, gives you a chance to interact with people who are making comics and comic books, right? Uh, but then, experienced cartoonists, like you, might be doing this for a number of years, and you know, you do your own flatting, and maybe it's like, oh, it'd be great if I could hire it out, but I can't afford it because the margins are very thin on this stuff. So, how can we make this more efficient, right? Um, this, I think, this one will also be useful for for people who are exploring Clip Studio Paint. Maybe want to unlock some more useful features because the things we're going to explore today have application in other parts of the process, um, and what kind of barriers might we encounter, work around, right? Um, we're going to talk a little bit about anti-aliasing and flats, and we're going to talk about trapping a little bit and like what those technical terms mean and why it's important in this process. So uh, here we go. Uh, wow, this is not sounding like, I mean, this sounds awesome. And I think we're, we're going to learn a ton with what you shared today. I'm just feeling bad that we called it a mini workshop. I can't wait to uh, <laughs> you know, get into this. Yeah, so we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually demo two handy power ups for in Clip Studio Paint for speeding up your flatting. But before we do that, we're gonna take a minute and thirty seconds to thank people who make this project possible, and those are the people who support us on Patreon. Yes. Patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. What is it? It's a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you believe in Rob and Jersey and what we do on this project called Lean into Art, you could support us for as little as a dollar a month. You could also do a one time contribution and you can cancel at the end of the month. You could, you know, whatever you can afford, whatever you think the show deserves, and avail yourself of the behind the scenes content and then check out at the end of the month. Thank you very much for the people who do that. But I want to thank five people who are supporting us on a regular, ongoing basis Mike White. Thank you, Mike for supporting us for a long time you can find mike's work on instagram at mike white robot and stephen stone bush thank you stephen it's awesome to have you here and you can find stephen on instagram at s stone bush art 
These will all be linked in the show notes, by the way. And Sophie Lawson. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, you can find Sophie on Twitter at Sophie Lawson Art. And Dave Strisay. Thank you, Dave, uh, for being here and part of this community. You can find Dave on Instagram at Dave Say. And Shawnee Redford, who you can find on Twitter at Shawnee Redfern. Thank you so much, everybody. You can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art where you'll find all the shows we make as well as the extra leans the shows we record only for people who support us on patreon and it gets you access to the lean into art discord which you can get to at lean into art.com slash discord actually the discord's public but if you support us on patreon you get access to special channels that are only for people who support us on patreon patreon.com slash lean into art it means a lot to us thank you so much mm -hmm. thank you and so so now wow, we're already it's time to demonstrate uh, what, what's happening already? Gosh. Already. Yeah, we're, we're jumping right in. All right. Uh, okay. So what I've got on screen is a page from an old mini comic that I made with my wife called Captain Cat, Former Shark Hunter. And I've been using this in my comics classes for a long time. And this is the page that's going to be available to you to download right now um, if you want to get started in doing this yourself. So um, and also just as a you know, uh, preamble to this is like, I'm going to be working with an existing color palette. Um, but it really doesn't matter what colors you use on this. And as a matter of fact, uh, a lot of colorists prefer that when you prepare flats for them, that, uh, that you don't necessarily use like what their palette is, let them choose what the palette is. Um, so let's see, like, where do we begin? So the page that I've prepared for you, actually, the ink is on transparent pixels. You can see that the transparent pixels by the black, uh, the gray and white checked boxes behind the artwork. I put a, a layer with white ink dropped in it, so it looks more like traditional paper, and it makes it easier to see the artwork. But if you have artwork that you scanned yourself and you want to make the whites transparent, that's just under edit. Uh, convert brightness to opacity, and that will actually knock out your whites and make it transparent, put your uh, black ink on a transparent layer. So, um, that's a good, that's really helpful. Eh, okay. It's right in the edit menu. Uh, yeah, it's right in the edit cool. menu. It's, it's so simple, uh, as, compared to what we used to have to do in Photoshop in order to get our whites knocked out or, you know, turn, making it the layer mode, uh, multiply. So my line art, I, I label the, the layer line art, and then I put a layer underneath called flats, a transparent raster layer. Okay. And so the first thing we're going to do is make our line art layer what's called a reference layer. And the reference layer, you can toggle. There's these little buttons at the top of your layer palette. Your, the layout of your app is not necessarily going to look like mine. Clip Studio has a very uh, editable um, uh, interface. You can move the panes around to like match your use case. But you can look for the layer palette by going to, uh, which is it? Uh, just under layer? No, it's under window. Yeah, and you could toggle open your layer palette. So, okay. And then, so to, to make it a reference layer, there's this little lighthouse icon at the top of your layer palette. And if you hover over it, it says set as reference layer. And once you click, click that, uh, the icon next to your line art layer will have that lighthouse right next to the eyeball there, the eyeball which toggles visibility. Turn it on and off. Um, and so, there's a reason that we've done that. We because you, the different tools in Clip Studio Paint can actually interact with different layers based on input that you give those tools, settings for those tools. So, and now we've got our raster layer underneath with flats. We've got our line art that has uh, that is set to be the reference layer. Now, uh, for those who are very new to these drawing apps, you know what layer you're working on by how it's highlighted in the layer palette. The one that's highlighted or lit up is your active layer, the one you're working on. Okay. So we are going to now set our opacity in the line art layer to approximately 70%. And that the opacity is this slider right next to your, uh, your layer mode or blending mode toggle. So let's set it down to 70. And then make sure to go back to my flats layer. And um, ah, we're going to select the paint bucket tool. So over here on the left side of the screen, are a whole bunch of different of your main tools. You've got magnifying glass, hand tool, lasso tool, you know, eyedropper, brushes. And this one that looks like a square that's turned on its side a little bit with it's like half full and something's dripping out of it, that's a paint bucket. In Clip Studio Paint, there are different settings for, there's different like nested tools. So you have uh, in your paint, when you hit paint bucket, up at the sub tool menu, which I toggled by tapping on 
the the next row of icons to the, to the right of the toolbar. Um, there's different paint buckets that are already pre-installed, and you can make new ones if you want to. And you, there's the first one that's highlighted says refer to only the editing layer, meaning that if I click on the flats layer with this paint bucket, it's just going to fill everything in that flats layer because it's it's only acting on that layer. But if I choose the tool that says refer to other layers, this paint bucket will operate on the flats layer, but it will act as if all the other layers are on that layer as well. Okay. Um, this is a very handy thing. You got some options in here that you want to check. Um, so you want to go down to where it says where it says refer other layers. What layers are you going to refer to? You can have it refer to all layers, or you can have it set to refer to the reference layer. There's that lighthouse icon again. I'm going to make sure that I toggle that. Hmm. Um, I'm going to turn on area scaling, and that means that when I hit with the when I drop a paint bucket uh, in an empty spot, it's actually going to expand the fill by like however many pixels I define here. I'm going to set it for two to start with, but you can change this depending on the, the width of your line art. And then I'm going to make sure the anti-aliasing is off. And aliasing, Rob, do you think you could define aliasing real quick? What that means? Yeah. So, I mean, so you have um, pixels and, uh, or, or let's see, or vectors, right? So in vectors you're painting with, you know, it's actually a, a line and there's sort of math of, of like what's describing the area of where color goes and where it doesn't and stuff like that, where, and, uh, you're doing raster coloring and that's when you have this grid of colors and you can have the grid of colors have sort of a, like a different relationship when there's a color next to a color or a color next to white, a color next to black colored, whatever. And, and the adjacent colors could blend or not. And that's what the aliasing is. If there's kind of a blend where there's, you go instead of stark from the, the dark, the reddish color, uh, to white, you're going from red to slowly to white instead of mm -hmm. it being just abrupt where the red ends, white begins, boom. It's, it's, it's more, it looks yeah. more, you know, jagged and, and sharp. Um, that's when, uh, things aren't, uh, anti-aliased. So the, the reason we're putting flats in the image is so that the colorist can easily select these images and then edit them after the fact. Um, mm -hmm. And so if I click on this, this green that I just threw down next to the red, you can see that it didn't select all the pixels between the green and the red because those are different colors than the green. So it makes it very difficult for the colorist to actually edit the colors unless you've used uh, non-anti-alias pixel. Actually, anti-aliasing was on with that with my selection tool. So I'll try this again. You'll see when I select this one, little marching ants, it's only selected the green pixels because that's all there is. There's just green pixels, red pixels, and white pixels. But you can see over here on this one, the selection has neglected a bunch of blended pixels. So that that's a quick understanding of why you want to use anti-alias. Uh, you want anti-aliasing to be off when you're flatting. All right, so now where was I? Uh, we are going to... Toggle expand selection or area scaling, um, and then which I showed you. That's area scaling is down here in the the, the tool property menu. You got the sub tool menu and the tool property menu immediately below it. And we are going to play with this other option here that you can see. I'm moving up and down called the close gap, depending on how your line work is, whether or not your line work has like a lot of closed lines or some open lines, you can actually tell the paint bucket to automatically close any gaps in the lines. The higher the value, the the more, the bigger the gap can be that the paint bucket will auto automatically fill. Okay. So there's another thing that Clip Studio has done that makes our lives easier. Uh, and so now we're going to just select a color. I'm just going to grab any old color. Let's pick something that looks like a sky color. So I'm going to start off in the second panel of this Captain Cat page. And I'm just going to click inside of making sure I'm on the flats layer. I'm going to click inside of that sky. And we can see that it has filled a couple pixels into the black line. Uh, and you can see here where there was an open shape. It filled inside of that shape too, mm -hmm. right? So in that case, what we would do is I would undo. And you could take your pen tool. I have a pen that has, non -al has anti-aliasing off. And that setting is down here in the tool property bar. You have the option to like select different levels of anti-aliasing. I'm moving that back and forth right now. So you can also like close that shape with you know um, a pen and then go back in with your paint bucket. And now, you know, it's filled mm. but not filled in that that shape. And there is our first flat color dropped in. Now you can see that. The reason I turned the opacity down on the line art, and I'll turn it down a little bit more even. So you can, 
you can then see how the flat colors are interacting with the lines underneath it. They're not filling in that far. So you can turn up the amount of area scaling. I'll turn up to four now and I'll undo twice to get those blue fills gone. I'll tap inside of there. And now maybe I'll choose a darker color to better demonstrate this. Now you can see that it's encroaching into the middle oh, yeah. of the black lines better. Because ultimately what you want is all the colors to meet up in, in just as I drew that red and green line. You want them to overlap enough so that there's no transparent pixels on your flats layer. Um, so the further you can get it to go in, the better. However, there's a tension, is that there's some lines that are thinner. So if I have it go over four, um, go back to my paint bucket tool property menu. Let's say I turn up to say like six or seven pixels because those sharks have very thick lines, right? So now when I tap it in, ah, now it's getting really far into the shark's lines. However, now it's overlapped the lines of background characters who have thinner lines on them. So it's a matter of finding a balance. So I'm going to say I'm going to stick at like four for now because that seems like it's going just far enough in and it's not getting inside of the smaller shapes too much. Okay. Um, where do we want to go next? Um, oh, so yeah, we'll, we'll finish. So, so what you would do now is I'm going to just go around and pick a couple colors and fill in these shapes. Let's fill in some of the sharks real quick. Okay. And so now, it's uh, you're you've you've perfect you've chosen a different color. Is it a different color by subject of like you hope this to be managed, you know, by the colorist, uh, yeah. it, you know, in a different yeah. way. It's like, hey, these are zones. These are zones. That's a great way of putting it, Rob. Um, these are zones. I don't I'm not when, when I hire a flatter, I'm not asking them to pay too close attention to what the actual color palette ultimately will be. I just want them to give me selectable zones for editing. And another reason I purposefully chose this example is that this example has a lot of soft lines on it, a lot of um, soft brush, brush, brush edges, mm -hmm. um, meaning, and I might even, like for different groupings of sharks, I might change the color, darken it just a little bit. Um, and so the, a problem arises out of that. You can see where the, some of these soft brush effects are happening. It's causing these little gaps in there. And like, am I going to go through and just one at a time, close all those gaps. Actually, I'm not. And hmm. I'm just going, I'm Wait. going to leave them for now. Okay. Oops. That's a little I'm, surprising. Um, I'm curious that. Yeah. I'm, I've got a surprise coming. Something that's going to, that the moment I've discovered this and this actually came by way of my, uh, former production assistant and student Aaron Polk, who showed this to me while I was teaching a class, and the noise that I made made all the kids gather around. So they're like, what? What, what? That was something amazing just happened over here because I was that excited about it. All right, so I'm going to grab, oops, want to capture the sky color, put it there. I just want to like do a couple more. You see how fast this is going already. I'm filling up this image with color pretty darn quickly. Mm -hmm. um, choose a watercolor, and I'm just going to just quickly close these with the brush. And then go in with the, there we go. And see, there's those white gaps there. I'm not going to worry about them just now. I'm going to leave them be. And just get a few more because I want to show how this, this next technique works. Right. And so, yeah, you've filled in all, all the big zones, basically. Mm -hmm. But then but then there's a little bit left. And I'm just, yeah. The, yeah. So, okay. So we've got. Saving a technique to share. And that's uh, it's so when, interesting. When I hide, like so when I hide the line art, you can see there's all these gaps. And if I were to hide the background layer too, you can see that it's transparent pixels between all these things. And this is what, this is not ideal flats. The person who hired you will not be happy if you give them flats that look like that. They can't use them. The colors all need to be butted up against each other, uh, and there'd be absolutely no, no gaps in between. And Preferably, the gap or the the thresholds between the two colors happen at the midpoint between the black lines. Okay, so the next tool we're going to go to and this is the second tool I promised I'd show you is down here at the very bottom of your toolbar, way at the bottom on the left. There's a number of tools, and I, it, your a preview icon may not necessarily look like this, where it looks like it's like a plunger with a pen sticking out of it. Um, it could look like this. 
What does it say when you hover over it? Like, what would the shortcut... Does it have a shortcut key or something that can help? Oh, yeah. Uh, like if you, oh, yeah, it's, it's the Y key. Tip. Yes. It's the Y key. Okay, that'll get you in that group of tools, at least. There we go. Thank you for that. Yes, if you hit your Y key, it'll get you down there. And in this, go again, the sub-tool in the upper left has all of the, the, the sort of nested bank of tools. And then underneath it, under the tool properties, you can change the property of the tool. The one we're concerned with is, and it comes pre-installed on Clip Studio Paint, is called Correct Line Width. And it, the, the preview icon looks like a plunger with a, like a pen sticking out of it. Um, like a plunger on its side, I guess. Down in the Tool Property menu, there is the option to either narrow the line or thicken the line. And you can change the amount of thickening by moving the little slider. I'm going to leave it at, what was that, at 4? Uh, you also tap the up and down keys on the little next to the number. So four pixels. And you can also change your brush size. And you'll see on my screen the little preview of the brush size changing as I move this slider back and forth. Okay, I'm going to leave it kind of big for what I'm about to do. So what I'm about to do, I'll, I'll turn off my line art layer so you can better see what I'm about to do here. So on my flats layer, I'm going to drag the line correction tool over top and just keep dragging. What? And it's closing the gaps. It's expanding the pixels to fill the gap. That and it's doing it. And uh, so wait, so how is it like? What pixel wins? And uh, will will this conflict with the the line art? So it does it equidistantly. It, it's 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 expanding uh, them on both sides. Now, depending on how uh, your fill was done, you can see right here in the shark's gums that there was some overlap that happened in the wrong direction. And that way, in that case, you'd take your pen tool and just do a quick correction. Um, mm -hmm. But most of the time, um, using this this method, and I've been doing this on the Captain Seriously comic I've been working on, um, I'll just drag I... this over. And if you if wow. you you can jack up the amount of you know pixel thickening that happens. Let's say you turn up to like seven, and just a couple drags, and boom, all those <laughs> gaps are closed. That's huge. So and now I've got again. I did this very fast and loose, but you can see that like for the most part, the flats are like it's, perfectly matched underneath the line art. Yeah, right? it's still compatible with the lines. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I have I flatted a seriously page the other day and it took me about twenty five minutes. And to put it in perspective, a page of flats used to take me um, you know, an hour or maybe a little bit more than an hour. Wow. Um so and you can make the brush really wide too. So you can make the brush gigantic, so you can just do one quick swipe over the thing and all of those pixels <laughs> will be expanded. And then I toggle <laughs> off the liner and we see that we have perfectly crisp flats so that's beautiful wow so that was that was the the demo is taking okay. dropping like thinking about your paint bucket tool thinking about the the sub tool the tool property settings um you know like if you have let me see if i can find something that has like a like a big open gap in it i tend to close a lot of my shapes but sometimes i don't ah so there's this lamp here in the background let me okay. pick a color for the lamp and I'll go to, and I'll turn up close gap all the way. So close gap is, is a setting in your tool property menu underneath your sub tool of the paint bucket or for other layers. So you see that it, if I were to turn it all the way down, turn close gap all the way down and, and tap inside of here, you see how the color spills out of that hole and all around its environment. If I turn close gap mm -hmm. all the way up, it reads that gap and says, let me close that for you, pal. So if you have loose line work. Oh. I yeah. love that. That is a great, uh, that's a very helpful one. Um, and so, so that one's close gap, which is a feature of the paint bucket. Mm -hmm. But then there's the, the tool, the, the tool group you get to with the Y key, which is the what other? It's it, called the correct the... line width tool. Okay, nice. Okay. So once again, I'm going to tap in this background and... I'll tap around as best I can, get some of the shapes. and But when I toggle off the line art, we'll see that there's gaps in there, right, between the lamp and the wall. And I just take that correct line width tool, drag it over, and it's filled. 
and it's non-anti-aliased. So it's nice and crisp. crisp? It's a per- perfect flat. Wow. So I suppose that I can, is fantastic. I can open up real quick just to show you what a final page of flats looks like. Um, so here's a page that I just did today. And I'll turn off my shading and I'll turn off my lettering. Um, and you can see, and I'll turn off the line art. And you can see that all the colors match up. There's no transparent pixels. It's nice, clean. Well, that's not, but I, I painted that in by hand. <laughs> but like, <laughs> here, here we go. So like, here's line art on line art off and this this was inked on paper so there's a lot of like soft brush strokes that i was working with and yet with the uh correct line width tool i filled it back i filled all the gaps in very very quickly so i managed to like i said flat this page in 30 minutes so there we go wow that was a sweet demo and uh and yeah uh thank you for that like i hopefully we can um do some highlights about like what was uh, we like what what were some of the things that you know that the highlights that we gained from this. I mean, I'm happy to react to it again and whatnot too. Okay. But we should probably do one more ad break to mention a way folks can support us on the show. All right. Yes. So if if you find this kind of demonstration useful, if you think that uh, what we do on Lean to Art brings you value. A way you can let us know that is by purchasing our products. And the product that I make that I hope you will purchase is Science Comics Rockets, which isn't directly related to flatting, except that this this book was drawn, a, a lot of it was drawn in Clip Studio Paint. As a matter of fact, all the coloring was done in Clip Studio Paint. And uh, the flatters that flatted the book for me, they used this technique that I'm showing you right now. And it's the history and science of rockets as told by the animals who participate in rocket history. You can find a link to it at sciencecomicsrockets.com. Rob? Oh, I just would like to uh, quickly mention how, you know, uh, I've, I made a workshop to help folks make the most of creative challenges. Creative challenges come up all the time about animation, making games, uh, illustration, comics, all kinds of things. And they're really fun, tempting events, but they can get, you know, they can get kind of overwhelming. And uh, they're tunable, though. So my workshop, customizing your next creative challenge, will help you make that next event work well for you what is what do you want it to feel like what kind of output do you want to see make that plan your own so get uh, customizing your next creative challenge at robstenzinger.com slash store.html okay so now that we're you know back in the discussion part of the show as we like close this out and like think about what we did where, where do you want to go um let's see so it's I think it, it can be tempting to uh, just sort of survive, you know, use a tool, get by, right? So you finish an illustration and, and just sort of move on to the next one. But then, I mean, you're going to do this a lot, right? So like what, what, um, like what are some things you think, um, like why is it worth facing, uh, practicing the tool, figuring out these things and um, like what, like, you know, what's to be gained by learning this? Well, I mean, I, I, I often make comparisons, uh, like use like physical activity as a metaphor for what we do in art in that, like I say to my students is like, you know, all of this drawing and creative stuff feels like it's really complex and unwieldy. But if you do it enough, it becomes a natural expression of who you are. Just like when you get on a bike, you don't say, where do my feet go? You just get on it and it's like it's an extension of your body. And to get to the point where your art feels like it's an extension of your like language is to make the tools as invisible as possible and to make the tools to make the tools l- less visible to you is um, a way to find more efficiencies and ways to familiarize yourself with all of the knobs and dials so part of this is just like the joy of mastery of understand like having an intuitive feeling for how to do this rather than um all right, I got to check, check off every item on the list. And did I, did I get everything on the list? I don't know, right? So there's part of that. Um, you know, and the, the other part of this that is exciting to me is that this is a very, like what we explored today, is a very accessible and approachable part of getting involved in comics, yeah. right? Um, again, this is something that I, I like advise any of my friends 
in my personal life who aren't artists, like, but like, but they want to be involved. I'm like, well, you know, you could do flatting part time and they're always in need. And if you do it really well, you know, you can, you can make not bad money at it and spend a lot of time like thinking about art, which is cool. Um, so like for the practicing artists, there's like that mastery aspect for the beginning artist. There's that way of like, this is very approachable and manageable in a way that historically it hasn't been. Um, I don't want to go into like too much barefoot in the snow uphill both ways, but the way to get like really clean flats like that used to be pretty laborious. Mm. And I mean, that's, that's where, um, I'm, I'm still practicing the, these new tools available in clip studio paint and because it, it, it offers surprises. So I've, um, I have found it rewarding to start to figure out like, well, I mean, things like reference layer, fill bucket type things. There's a, there's a whole ocean of things to get practiced in just with the, the bucket tool, but then stuff like the, um, the close, what is it called? The close. Oh, <laughs> see, I keep forgetting the name myself. It's called the co correct line width. Correct line width. Like it's such an inter it's, it's, it, it's just not a thing I'm fluent in, right? I, I don't think of anything in the physical world as my co correct line width tool. And <laughs> so it's, uh, but it's super, it's powerful and rewarding to pick up at the same time. So, um, so I'm, I'm excited and, and, and open to that learning. And it's just, uh, like I, I need folks to, to do these kind of demos to, to just even get that highlighted in the sea of options. So that's, I find that very helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. And yeah, I mean, it's just like, like just finding new ways to do things efficiently is just also for me, it's very fun. So, um, mm. so yeah, your thing... time, your time to do this went down quite a bit. Yeah, you saw how fast that that panel started to come together, right? So, I mean, I I would have had that flatted probably like in another like five ten minutes, um, which is pretty. And, and again, when you look at the kind of artwork it is, this is even easier if you're dealing with really clean line art. So, um, but I want to do a, a use case where it's like maybe you work in like a, a very pencil-y style. You know, what do you do then? Um, you can still like use that. paint bucket. Yeah. You, you're this, this is a, like, if this were a cooking show, you chose a hard dish, right? This wasn't, <laughs> you know, saying it's uh this was no bowl of cereal. Uh, well, no, no. And, and it, yeah, using the cookie show analogy, it's like, it's like somebody saying like, okay, well, I'm going to show you how to beat an egg and then and scramble it. And I'm like, yeah, well, but I've got a party of 12 coming over and they want an omelet. What do I do then? You haven't helped me. So let's, let's show you the, doing the party of 12 and like, yeah, but, but if you want to just make an, uh, like a, a scrambled eggs for yourself you learned that in this too. Your life will be much easier. But, you know, it's like everybody makes art differently and that's something to be celebrated and cherished. So let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's try to help everybody if we can. So one of the things that we're doing with this new format exploration that I think is very amenable to my worldview uh, and my approach to things is we're having a section called Wondering and Questions. Questions, thoughts, and wonderings. That's how I close my classes uh, all the time. And I love the word wondering because it is... Uh, so informal and it, it speaks to how I think like I'm just wondering about this I don't have a good question for it but I'm wondering about it so what are you wondering about when we talk about this idea of like leveling up clip studio paint flatting etc um I like the approachability of wondering because I often when I get to this this stage of of, of learning or teaching something I think about um I, mean, I like to think of what can go wrong <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, which is less inviting than wondering, but uh, yeah. but it can be useful. Uh, so, is there any way where this can can go amiss? Like like if, like is this a bad fit for some some problems? Well, this here's an example of where it would not be as simple as I'm pointing it out to be. Right again, if you have really clean line art, it's going to be pretty straightforward and easy. But uh, this image that I pulled up on screen, where cat and cat and Maggie are on the boat in the background. And let me just try to fill some things in, you know, that's going great. But suddenly we've got a situation with this, right. With, with the mast or the, this ladder where, yeah, so there's a lot of texture in there. There's a lot of texture in there. Right. And so this would be a situation where I probably would have to go in and do a little bit of manual work on it after the fact. Right. Um, so, and this is what, yeah, so, so this is, 
if you have a lot of texture in the lines, like in the water here, like you saw me do this earlier, I go in with the pen tool and close some of those shapes ahead of time. And then just like quickly drag. That's another thing I forgot to mention is that you can just like click and drag, uh, to do fills and as long as it's encountering the same color pixel it'll fill it the same color so watch i'm going to click on the first shark let me get it in purple click on it and i'm just gonna i haven't lifted my pen i'm just dragging over dragging over so you can like fill really fast you are going across lines but it doesn't care about them because it's because they're a different color huh yeah yeah because that's a different color than than what's than transparent now if i want to change the, the color of all those sharks or like a bank of those sharks i can just click and drag and you know, I've, I've colored just two of those sharks in the background rather than all of them. Um, so, so that is where it could go wrong is if you have a lot of texture and a lot of open shapes, you may have to go in with your pen tool and clean up some of the, or not clean up, but like close some of those holes or touch up some of those. So like, for instance, let's put in some sky here, you know, and I can close, you can see that if I use the, uh, the correct line width tool here, it may give me some unpredictable mm. results. Uh, well, it's not too bad, but it's not too bad. It's not, yeah, it's actually, it's actually pretty serviceable. Um, so it's a pretty, I guess this, this, this approach is pretty robust, but there, there may be some actual little tiny bits of touching up you have to do afterwards. Um, so like in thin the case spaces, that, lots of texture could, yep. could lead you to some extra follow up work. Hm. Yep. That there's that. Um, also, while well, we're talking about wondering, if anyone wants to like dig into this even further, um, there's a leaner. Uh, oh, goes who, by the handle of Dado. Yeah, leaner Dado. Who, and I'll try to pull it up on screen. Um, he has a great resource on the tips.clipstudio.com, uh, and we'll link to this in the show notes, which like walks very carefully through this whole idea of like flatting and masking in a much more detailed way um, and explains more of the, the actual nitty gritty of what I was doing there. Like trapping is when you have the colors actually uh, overlapped by the line just right. And there's a reason for that. Um, so if you want to dig more into it, it's a great tutorial that like really helps flesh out uh, a full understanding of, of how flats work. So if you're intrigued, there's a place to go dig up more. Hmm. Wow. Well, that's, that's good. That's, um, extra resources. Um, things can go wrong. I'm not, uh, I wasn't thrown off from that. Like I'm, I'm still, I'm still here for it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to practice this tool. I, I don't feel waved off. So good. Oh, good. I, I feel like I feel like the gains you make in terms of time are more than compensated for if you have to do a lot a lot of little touch ups even on a page like the one I have here. So, um, anything else th uh, we want to mention? I think that was I think that was a show. I think this okay. was a, a, a really great workshop. It didn't feel that many. It's pretty <laughs> pretty useful. So, cool. Uh, thanks for sharing all that with us. Yeah, well, thank, thanks for, for uh, flying co-pilot on this one, Rob. I appreciate it. And, uh, and for the it's reflections and reactions. I, I think I'm going to have to have some, like a soundboard or maybe some mood music because um, uh, I'm, I'm a hype man a little bit here and there, but I, I'm yeah. going to keep practicing ways to, if, for, the, for these episodes where I'm, you know, uh, in, in that side role, mm. I'm going to keep experimenting. Well, and, and I'll be learning from you when you do the workshops and I'm running uh, co-facilitator. Um, mm -hmm. And one more reminder, the, the link to the, I have a Clip Studio Paint version and a Photoshop version of this file that I was using today, the Cap and Cat page, that you are free to download and play with yourself. You will need to get Clip Studio Paint in order to do what I was doing today, but you can get a three-month trial, and the link to that will be located in the show notes as well. So mm -hmm. uh, any questions, thoughts, or wonderings after the fact, please take them to the Lean Into Art Discord at, at leanintoart.com slash discord. Be glad to discuss it with you there. So uh, we record the show weekly on, in drops on Thursdays at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash leanintoart. We'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, I have been Jersey Droz of leanintoart.com and Jersey Droz on Instagram. And I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user lean into art and you can reach us via email at lean into art at gmail.com and remember leaners aren't wieners thanks for listening